Hi there and welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and today we're going to be looking at the M5 Atom with MicroPython. Those of you that bought an Atom may have been a bit disappointed to find that it's not yet supported in UI Flow. We'd like to apologize for this. It's due to the rush before the Chinese New Year holiday. And as you may have seen on the news, things in China are a bit crazy right now. But nevertheless, if you're indoors escaping the oncoming apocalypse, now could be a good time to learn some coding skills. If you're not familiar with MicroPython, it's a stripped down version of Python which is intended for use on microcontrollers. First, we'll download the latest MicroPython firmware from the micropython.org site. First, I'll show you how to flash the firmware on Mac. If your system isn't Mac, then you can fast forward to the Windows part. Besides the MicroPython firmware, we'll also need Espressive's ESP tool, which is a flashing program. It can be installed with PIP, which should be on your computer if you already have Python installed. So open a terminal, type pip install ESP tool, and they will be good to go. If for some reason pip is not on your computer, you can install it with easy install pip. We'll also download this repository as we need the esptool.python script. Extract the ESP tool zip and then find the firmware and move it to the ESP tool master folder. Now the file is way too long for me to type, so I'm just going to shorten it to esp32.bin. Now open a terminal and make sure you're in the ESP tool master directory. Here we can see the esptool.py script that we're going to be using. Now we'll need to find the port name of our M5 Atom device. We can do so by typing ls forward slash dev forward slash tty period asterisk. Your port name should look something similar to this starting with USB serial. Copy this as we're going to need it in the next step. Now we'll type out the arrays and write commands that are listed on the ESP tool GitHub page. First we'll erase the flash as if you've had an Arduino program on there previously it may muck up the flashing process. Just enter the chip as ESP32, the port is the one we copied, followed by the command erase flash. And in just a moment, the flash will be erased. OK, now for flashing, we can cycle back up to that command that we just used, and then add in the board rate. The board rate listed in the commands on the ESP tool GitHub is not correct for our device, as you'll see in a moment. We need to set it to 115200. Then we use the write flash command, followed by the address, and then the file of the firmware. When that's gone through, we'll see the message hard resetting via RTS pin. To double check it's flashed successfully, we can open up a screen session by using screen, port name, and then the board rate 115200. Then if we reset the device by pressing the left hand button, we can see the boot message and yes, version 1.12 of MicroPython has been successfully flashed. OK, now for Windows. Just as for Mac, we'll need to download the ESP tool repository from GitHub. Then we'll also need PySerial from PyPy.org. Download these and extract them and then we'll need to open a Windows command prompt terminal. Now you need to navigate to wherever you extracted the PySerial zip to. We'll then install it by typing python setup.py install. OK, now for erasing and flashing. Once you've extracted the ESP tool zip, you need to navigate to the ESP tool master folder. This time it's not too different from the Mac. We just need to go into device manager to find out which port our M5 Atom is connected to. Mine is COM36. So I'll type it in and then add the erase flash command. Now we've successfully erased the flash. 
we need to copy that MicroPython firmware file into the ESP tool master folder. Again, I'll rename it to make it easier. Again, we'll set the board rate and change a raise flash to write flash, followed by the address and the firmware file. And there we are. Now we can start to communicate with the M5 Atom by using a terminal program on Windows such as Putty. Choose Serial from the options, set the board rate to 115200 and the COM port to whatever it is on your computer. And there we are, let's get coding. First of all we can use the help modules command to see what modules are available on this MicroPython firmware. Since the M5 Atom's LED matrix is simply using WS2812 or NeoPixel RGB LEDs, we can use the NeoPixel library to control them. So let's go ahead and import that. We can then check the NeoPixel commands on the official MicroPython documentation. First we need to import pin from machine and then we'll need to set up the pin. We can see here in the M5 Atom docs that the RGB LEDs are connected on pin 27. So we set the pin to pin 27 and its mode to pin out. Next we create an instance of the NeoPixel class. We'll just call it NP. The first argument is the pin number, so we can use the pin that we just set the variable for. The next argument is the amount of LEDs. The M5 Atom LED matrix has 25 LEDs. Now we can set each individual LED by choosing its index and then setting the RGB values. Once we've done that, to see the result, we'll also need to type the command np.write. And there we have it. The first LED, which is 0, not 1, has lit up. Let's do it again for the next LED in the series. Just copy the command and change the RGB values. OK, now let's see how to set up the face button of the M5 Atom. We can do this in just the same manner but setting pin in instead of pin out in the pin setup. To test we could make a simple program to turn on the LED if the button is pressed down. The GPIOs on the reverse can also be set up in a similar way using pin out or pin in for output or input. You can see the function of each pin on the docs page of the M5 Atom. What else does the M5 Atom have? It has the MPU6886 accelerometer and an IR LED. Unfortunately, the MPU6886 library hasn't been released yet, but I'm pushing to get that out soon. While I was making this video, I didn't have access to any I2C sensors, so I'm afraid I'll have to leave the pins and Grove port until next time. I hope that's enough to get you started with programming the M5 Atom in MicroPython. Hopefully I can make some videos on some simple projects with the M5 Atom, especially using the accelerometer when that Python library is available. If there's any specific projects you'd like to see with the M5 Atom, please make sure to leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.